God cares for you. God loves you. I'm not sure what kind of week you've had, but God cares about it. And right now, let's bring it to Him. Let's lay down all the care and worry, just the exhaustion. And let's allow His precious Holy Spirit to refresh you right now. Precious Lord, we look to you as our filler. Father God, as the one who restores us, who redeems us, who strengthens us, who takes our grief and our sorrows and exchanges them for your gladness, Lord, for your joy even. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Fill us to the full right now with your joy and give us the ability to pay attention to your word. Lord, it costs us something to hear your downloads. Father God, help us to be receivers right now of the incorruptible seed of your word. May it grow up, produce everlasting life here on earth as it is in heaven, in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. We are back into part three of Live Life Strong. Live Life Strong. I love this series for you, for me. It's God's word for our life. And we're going to specialize in this part, in this segment, talking about live life strong like an eagle, like an eagle. Let me state the obvious. If you're going to live life strong, you need to be strong. You might be thinking, well, I guess that's it for me. I'm, I'm cashing out. I'm done. I'm weak. So living life strong is out of my reach. Ain't ever going to happen, Stephen. Oh, but you're not a quitter. You're not a giver upper. No way. That's not really you. You might be a little bit angry with yourself in the world, but deep, deep down, you don't want to roll over and call it quits, do you? No, that's not in you. The truth is you long to be, you desire to be strong. And coincidentally, you want to live life strong. God put that desire deep down inside of you. Listen to this. Faith makes real what feelings don't feel. Faith makes real what feelings don't feel. This will encourage you. Nobody on earth can truly live life strong without plugging into the genuine power source made evident in the manufacturer's standard for all of humanity. Many people live and die never knowing who the true source of life power is. Humanity has been plagued with a deadly crisis of Bible illiteracy for so long that we're born into traditions we've invented that project ideologies on the next generation like, hey, you better pay your dues, or where there's no struggle, there's no strength, or this one really bugs me too. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Talk about the epitome of ignorance. Bible illiteracy. It's faith that makes real what feelings don't feel, specifically faith in God. Ephesians 6, verse 10, we get this. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with Him. Draw your strength from Him, that strength which His boundless might provides. Talking about life and God's summary on the topic is this. You and I are meant to be strong in the Lord. We're called to draw our strength from Him. And Ephesians 6.10 tells us that God's might is boundless. It's unlimited. That means there's no end to His strength, His might. Unlimited strength and empowerment as we are in union with Him. There is a correlation. You might feel so weary today and even feel like you just can't go on. But know this deep in your heart. Hear this deep in your heart. God wants to fill you to the full, strengthen you, connect you to his boundless might and unlimited power. Joel 3 verse 10 says this, let the weak say, I am strong. I'm a warrior. Part of who you are, who God's called you to be is to be strong in the Lord. This is your destiny. In this episode of Live Life Strong, part three, we're going to talk about how you were made to be like an eagle. That's right. God has specifically called you as a citizen of his kingdom to rise up, to mount up like an eagle. Did you know that God, in helping us understand his character, his divine character and strength, compares himself to an eagle? That's amazing. Look at this, Exodus 19, verse 4. 
This is God talking, and he says, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians. Well, we know a little bit about that. And how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. The better you know God, the better you begin to know yourself, your design. You're made in God's image. There's something about humanity that has an affinity with the eagle. The ancient Romans famously used the image of the eagle as a symbol of imperial power, representing courage, strength, and even immortality. The United States has used the bald eagle as a national seal representing the country since 1782. The eagle has long been considered the king of all the birds. And to think, here we have God Almighty using the eagle's wings as a metaphor to compare to his saving power. Praise God. The Hebrew word for eagle is neshur. Neshur, which means living prince or warrior. We're about to find out that God is calling each one of us to be a warrior, like an eagle, royalty, a living prince over the earth and sky. That's the outcome of truly waiting on the Lord, actively waiting on Him and downloading His strength, His might. Warren Buffett, the famous businessman, investor of Berkshire Hathaway, he said this, if you want to soar like an eagle in life, you can't be flocking with the turkeys. I like that. It just really resonates. It's so simple. So this mindset even works in the world of business and investing. We're about to gain a whole new Bible perspective on ourselves, on our own destiny, as we examine this segment called Like an Eagle. This is for you. Maybe some of you ladies are thinking, well, this sounds more like a topic for the guys. I, I'm more into being like a sweet little dove or a beautiful, colorful hummingbird. Well, consider this. Psalm 103 verse 5 says, God satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. So if you want the heavenly version of Botox, filler, youth serum, and high performance wrinkle correction treatment, forget about your hummingbird theology and identity and get on board with being like an eagle with God's direction, of course. You might even save some money on creams. Here we go. Oh, I know that you've been waiting for this truth to come up in this series, so wait no longer because here it is, God's truth for you that epitomizes the live life strong reality. Let's read Isaiah 40, starting at verse 28. Have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not faint or grow weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Verse 29, he gives power to the faint and weary. And to him who has no might, he increases strength, causing it to multiply and make it to abound. Even youth shall faint and be weary, and selected young men shall feebly stumble and fall exhausted. But... Those who wait for the Lord, who expect, look for, hope in Him, shall change and renew their strength and power. They shall lift their wings and mount up close to God as eagles. Mount up to the sun. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint or become tired. God doesn't faint or grow weary. He has unlimited understanding, but it doesn't stop there. God Almighty gives power to the faint, the weary, to the person with zero might. He actually makes the zero strength person multiply and abound in might and power. Those who wait for the Lord, who expect, look for, anticipate, and hope in God, renew their strength, their power. They charge up their battery. They supercharge their human engine. They lift up their wings like an eagle moving toward the sun. They run and they don't grow weary. They walk and they don't faint or become tired. Praise God. My friend, this is the ultimate metaphor to your live life strong destiny. Your reality has always meant to be supercharged by God's pure might, power, strength, and inspiration. What's the key though? Wait on the Lord. Wait on God. You see, an electric car, it needs to stop and hook up to a charge. Or a gas car, it needs to stop and fill up with fuel. Stopping is key to being fueled for the journey. What have you been filling up on? What's in your tank right now? 
Have you been getting charged up? And if you don't know your design, it's hard to be intentional about that. Tony Robbins, the motivational speaker, said, if you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always gotten. You might be thinking, but, but that's what I don't want. Stephen, I don't want what I've always gotten. Do some reverse engineering right now. Are you weary, tired, discouraged? Is that where you're at right now? Two questions then. What are you doing that's brought you here? And what are you not doing that leaves you here? Your design, no matter how godlike it is, needs power, needs fuel, energy, strength. Listen to Philippians 4, verse 13. I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. My friend, we are self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. We need a source. We were never meant to be world dependent or servants to the stuff, but we are happily dependent on the great source of all life, God, Jehovah, the creator, Jesus, the word. Zig Ziglar, the great author and motivational guru said this, what you get by achieving your goal is not as important as what you become by achieving your goals. Ah. Oh. That's strong. That's a strong picture. You see, life is not about getting, but about being. That's why people who get a purpose and try to evolve by their own sufficiency into an identity, they always suffer, they lose, they crash in the end. No legacy. So let's get into what you are to be. Identity, your destiny. You're called to the supernatural eagle life, the live life strong life, soar like an eagle destiny. Being strong is to be of God, in God, and one with God. Humanity tends to promote independent strength that showcases individual accomplishment. Now, for those who give God credit for their great achievements, that's in keeping with waiting on God and a dependence on the source of all life. However, there are those who grab this worldly momentary bit of success and seem to think they did it their way. That's living weak because it's arrogantly assuming any talent, any strength, or cognitive ability is self-generated. Are you kidding me? You made yourself? You manufacture your own air and hydrogen supply in a world that you somehow conjured up? You see, that's foolish, foolish little thinking. Every good that you have is because of God and to deprive him of the credit for it, the glory for it, and the honor is only to hasten self-destruction. It's time to get your eagle on. Come on, let's get our eagle on. Yes, it's time to get out of the nest. If you feel God stirring you, it's time to fly. Eagles don't run, they soar. Is there something that you're doing to try and prove that you're strong? Nobody goes to an eagle 100-yard dash. Eagles aren't famous for running marathons. No, no, and then double no. Because eagles know who they are. They get their fly on and dominate the skies. Are you trying to dominate something that contradicts your design? Ken Blanchard, the author and the business consultant, said, don't quack like a duck, soar like an eagle. Here's the challenge for some Christians. They seek first other kingdoms that never give them a fill or a charge for their life. Some believers seek first traditions. They seek first genetics. Some believers seek first the past. They seek first their own sacrifice. Seek first guilt and shame for their sins. They seek first events and religious activity. No. None of that stuff is what Jesus said would trigger the benefits of Matthew 6, 33. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you, which majors on the supernatural charge, the strength, the might, the power. Listen to this once again. Faith actions make real what feelings don't feel. Faith actions make real what feelings don't feel. Waiting on God is a faith activation. God gives power to the faint and the weary as we wait upon Him. Do you qualify for God's power? Today, 
Do you qualify? A few verses before Isaiah 40, verse 31 tells us, they that wait upon the Lord shall mount up with wings as eagle. The statement is made that God gives power to the faint and the weary. So I ask you again, do you qualify for God's power? Well, maybe you're wondering, what does it mean to truly wait upon the Lord? Ah, now that's a good question. If you're feeling weak and empty today, this is for you. God's going to fill you. Maybe you've worked in a restaurant business as a waiter or waitress. And if you haven't, I can assume that you've been to a restaurant at least a few times for lunch or dinner. After a hostess has seated you, your waitress or waiter will begin serving your table. Basically, that person waits on you, right? They wait on you. They take your order. They listen to what you want. A really good waiter makes it all about you and works to please you. When you consider this analogy, I hope it helps you realize to wait upon the Lord is not some passive, let me scroll on my phone while God does something for me kind of thing right? When I take my wife shopping, I wait upon her. That's right. I patiently wait upon her. Trust me, it's not a passive wait. The book of James 1 says, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience and let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, lacking nothing. You see, something's happening in me, even though I may look like I'm in a passive state. Oh, I'm not. I anticipate. I expect Pam's smile, her happiness. Yes, I expect and anticipate Pam to look at me with those adoring eyes every once in a while. My friend, true waiting is not passive, but loaded, loaded with expectation and anticipation. Now that's faith. The Hebrew word that we translate into wait upon, or as the NIV says, hope in, more accurately tells us to bind up with. So if we bind up with God Almighty, we're receiving power. I mentioned earlier the idea of stopping your car to get refueled or recharged. The vehicle may be at a stop, but it doesn't mean waiting is passive. Something needs to be going on to re-energize and gain renewed supply for the journey ahead. Passively waiting, that's just religious. That's just religion. Think of it with regards to the full Hebrew meaning of wait upon the Lord. We get the privilege of binding up with God. We actually fasten ourselves to the greatest supply of power and strength in all of the universe. God is the unfailing source of all blessing, all goodness. So listen to this promise from God's word for us in Deuteronomy 1 verse 11. May the Lord, the God of your fathers, make you a thousand times as many as you are and bless you as he has promised you. God wants to make you a thousand times more. You might say, well, that just seems beyond imagination, Steve. That's, that's just hyperbolic rhetoric. No, that's simply a hint at the magnitude and the superior greatness of God Almighty. He is from everlasting to everlasting. God's love is so big. His love and mercy is so boundless, infinite, without measure. The variable here is our ability to wait, to wait on the Lord, to attend, to attend to His presence. Jim Elliott, Christian missionary and martyr, he once said this, wherever you are, be all there. Don't be a believer in name only. That's just religious and traditional. Be the real thing and wait on the Lord. I've quoted Proverbs 4, 1 before for you, but it says, pay attention in order to gain. See, that's waiting on the Lord. Dr. Carolyn Leaf, the author of Who Switched Off My Brain, she warns about the danger of a mental state that she calls milkshaking. It's when you're multitasking between various lanes of thought and focus. For example, you're trying to have a conversation with someone while you're flipping through your phone, plus the TV is playing a program in the background, and at the same time, you're worrying about your parents. What can you do to help their situation? You see, you're milkshaking, and it's creating cognitive dissonance in your brain. You're actually inflaming your brain with a barbaric medieval torture device called the rack. 
You're pulling your brain apart with diverging directions of focus and thought. No wonder you got a headache. No wonder you're stressed. That's not how to live life strong. That's actually called how to live life wrong, right? To live life strong, we all must mount up with wings as an eagle. So let's apply what we gather from the concept of like an eagle. Let's get pragmatic here. Number one, you must see like an eagle. An eagle's eye is almost as large as a human's. It is estimated that an eagle can see four to eight times better than the average person. They have a 340 degree field of view, and that's what we're really talking about here, is having vision for life. Many people see, but they fail to have vision. That's a blindness worse than ocular darkness. To have clarity like an eagle is really about perspective. The typical view of an eagle is aerial and from high above. To see like an eagle is really about having vision and seeing what others don't. Seeing opportunities and solutions. Jesus tells us in the book of John that with the Holy Spirit's help, we should have knowledge of things to come. See what's to come. Now that's vision into the future. It's perspective and it's prophetic. God wants you to have spiritual eagle eyes. Irving Berlin, the famous composer of over 800 songs, and a lot of them so famous, said this, life is 10% what you make it and 90% how you take it. Perspective. We must learn to see beyond like an eagle. Number two. Think like an eagle. It's not enough to have God's power to fly if you don't think flight thoughts. Chickens don't need eagle powers to fly when they're content to scratch around with the other hens in the chicken coop. If attitude is everything, then having power to fly like an eagle is pointless if your attitude is that of a turkey, right? Did you know golden eagles can reach altitudes of over 10,000 feet? They make use of the thermal air currents and face into the winds of adversity. They mate for life. Eagles are committed no matter if it's to their mate, the hunt, or flying above the storm. It's time for you to start thinking like an eagle. Get the attitude of an eagle. You do it. Colossians 3 verse 2 says, set your mind on things above. You weren't designed for chicken barnyard thinking, so think like an eagle with God's word and the help of his Holy Spirit. Number three, identify like an eagle. No, you're not an eagle, but we said earlier, even God compared himself to an eagle in a metaphor. My friend, your identity is key to who you are. Jesus didn't come just to save you from your chicken identity, to stay a chicken, or even migrate over into being a turkey. Let go of what you were and be reborn into a new identity. The eagle is considered the king of the birds. Jesus is the king of kings. You need to let go of what you were and accept who Jesus has authorized you to be. Surrender your chicken ID card and soar like an eagle. Eagles build huge nests. You know why? Because they're eagles. You need bigger dreams with a bigger self-image in Christ Jesus. The word says, behold in the word of God as in a mirror the glory of God and be transfigured into ever increasing splendor from one degree of glory to another. Jamie Foxx, the famous actor and comedian said, if I were an animal, I would be an eagle. Good choice, Jamie. You don't know who you are until you know who God says you are. Jesus told Peter, this is who you are. God called Gideon, mighty man of valor. Stop seeing yourself as less and identify as Isaiah 40 verse 31 said to, like an eagle. Number four, feed like an eagle. Newborn eagles feed like eagles long before they ever learn to fly like an eagle. They have a high metabolism, which means they need a serious constant food supply. You need your spiritual identity fed often and regularly. If you eat chicken food and peck around the barnyard looking to fill your belly with whatever, you'll never soar like an eagle. Like the saying goes, garbage in, garbage out. Jesus said, man can't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. God wants to feed you directly from his mouth. That's how young eagles eat. 
directly from their parents' mouth. Isn't it time that you start to feed like an eagle? That requires waiting on the Lord, my friend, actively waiting with expectation. And number five, mount up with wings like an eagle. That's what it's all about, being activated. Just because you've never flown before doesn't mean that it's not for you. If you're not flying, it's because someone is lying. What kind of lies are you buying into that keep you grounded? This is the action stage. You must act on the wisdom that God gives you. Eagles don't live in the nest. They live on the currents of the air that cause them to soar far above the earth. God doesn't call you to flap, but to soar. Scientists have watched eagles soar effortlessly in what appears to be hurricane force winds because of the special design of their seven foot wingspan. Isaiah 40 verse 31 specifically says that you will mount up with wings as eagles. That means you're called to soar, my friend. Let the currents and the hurricane winds of adversity work for you to take you higher and higher from one level of glory to another level of glory and another. Yes, to live life strong means that you must wait actively on the Lord so that you can mount up with wings as eagles. Be activated today in your true identity. One more time, let's read Isaiah 40, verses 29 to 31. He gives power to the faint and the weary, and to him who has no might, he increases strength, causing it to multiply and making it to abound. Even you shall faint and be weary, and selected young men shall feebly stumble and fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord, who expect, look for, and hope in him shall change and renew their strength and power. They shall lift up their wings and mount up close to God as eagles mount up to the sun. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint or become tired. Praise God, power to the faint and weary, multiplied strength to those who have no might. That sure sounds good to anyone who feels weak and discouraged right now. You shall run and not be weary, walk and not faint. That sounds like, that sounds like the blessing of God. Let me tell you right now what is tiring. Trying to be what you're not. Trying to live a lie. Trying to evolve into an identity only God can give you. The creator has designed you. Don't you think he knows what you were made for? You're called by Father God to mount up like an eagle. You're called to new heights and new levels of glory. Don't let chicken theology take over your life and make you content with picking around the barnyard. It's demoralizing and it's uninspiring. You're outside of God's given context there. Don't settle, my friend. God has true identity for you and it's the only way that you can live life strong. That's always been God's plan for you, to live life strong and now we know like an eagle. I'd like to pray for you. Heavenly Father, you created everything, including the majestic eagle that soars upon the highest mountain in the turbulent winds. You've called us first to wait on you and then to mount up with wings as eagles. You've always planned for us to get our renewed strength from you. In fact, Ephesians 6 commands us to be strong in you. That's how important being strong is, Lord. We're called to live life strong, but in you, not in ourselves. Weariness is not what you've called us to, mighty God, but strength, renewed vitality, power, authority, and endurance that displays a testimony to your might. Praise God. The days ahead just got more exciting knowing what you're calling each one of us to. Help us now to wait upon you with great expectation for renewed strength and refilling. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for sharing this very important time with us. Get our free app with the daily prayer and join us for this Tuesday Talks for an exciting, interactive question and answer and prayer time where we talk about what's important to you. At Living Room Church, you are loved. And together, we live life strong.